Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Today once again we delve into the cartel world, covering a recent brutal case that was actually covered by some mainstream media, even here in the UK. The video was released on the 1st of October 2021, and it depicted the capture, interrogation and murder of Galero Unidos members. The crime was perpetrated by the Los Tlacos cartel, who I've never heard of until this point and honestly, there's very little information about this particular cartel on the internet. The only thing that I can really find about them is that they are based in the state of Guerrero in Mexico, and that they see the Guerrero Unidos cartel as rivals. And of course the Guerrero Unidos cartel are most known for their alleged involvement in the disappearance of 43 Mexican students in Iguala. So to put it mildly, they're not exactly the nicest of guys. Aside from being in the drug trafficking trade, they are also known for kidnap, extortion and murder of civilians, and that is even referenced in this video by the Los Tlacos cartel. The video is shot in the middle of the day, in a forest in Iguala, Guerrero. It shows around 20 captured members of the Guerrero Unidos cartel, surrounded by Los Tlacos gunmen. The video was around 7 minutes long, and it begins with a drawn out interrogation scene where a Los Tlacos member was going through one by one and asking the captured Guerrero Unidos members who they were, who they worked for, and what they did. I will actually show you the interrogation scene, I don't have English subtitles for this, so any Spanish speakers in the chat please feel free to translate below, but rest assured I do have some translations in regards to what was being said, and I will go through that in a moment, but without further ado, check this out. It's definitely a bit eerie. Gente de Iguala, aquí están todos los culos que extorsionaban y que andaban matando gente inocente y mujeres. La basura que tenían en terror a esta bella ciudad, se los dijimos, y llegó el momento, esta plaza ya tiene dueño. Todos los de la bandera colgaron sus lonas y vean dónde están, hijos de su puta madre. Puto cachetes, aquí está toda tu puta gente de mierda, al igual que tú, Chucho Brito, hijo de tu puta madre, traicionero de mierda. Ya tenías armada tu mesa con gama, para sentarte a mamar como toda tu mierda vida. Se le dio la mano, mierda chaquetero, y la mordiste, como a todos los que te han ayudado, hijo de tu perrísima madre. Aquí está la gente de la sierra, culos. La sierra no perdona, o se alinean, o los vamos a matar, mierdas. Tu nombre? Juan Manuel Marín. 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 Juan Manuel Perdona, Lee Ramírez Carreto, alias El Tarro, mi patrón Chucho Brito. Giovanni Rabadán Ramírez, mi patrón Chucho Brito. Luis Adán, el W. Pablo López, Casarrubias, Garrafos, mi patrón Chucho Brito. Mi patrón Chucho Brito, Waldo López, Casarrubias, Garrafos. Dublán Tavares Pérez, Dubalín. Andrés Rodríguez Sánchez, mi patrón Chucho Brito. Vengaron a su madre, hijos de su puta madre. ¿A qué se dedica tu patrón Chucho Brito? Es que tiene la línea con el ayuntamiento. ¿Por qué? Es el que tiene la línea con el ayuntamiento. ¿A qué se dedica? A sacar la lana de las construcciones y todo eso de las obras. ¿A qué se dedica Chucho Brito? A que se vaya al ayuntamiento a quitar todo el dinero que puede. ¿A qué se dedica? A sacar todo lo que puede del ayuntamiento. ¿Y ustedes qué eran? ¿A qué te dedicabas? Yo preparaba el jale. ¿Y tú? Preparaba el jale. ¿Y tú? Sicario. Fuerte. Sicario. ¿Tú? Fuerte. Fuerte. Sica, señor. Fuerte. Sica. ¿Tú a qué te dedicabas? Sica. Sicario. ¿Y tú? Metía las cosas al cerezo. Fuerte. Metía las cosas al reclusorio. ¿Qué cosa? Eh, la marihuana, la cocaína, la cerveza. ¿Y 
Sica. Fuerte. Sica. Amando de casa. Cobrador de cuota. ¿Y tú qué hacías? Les limpiaba. Fuerte. Limpiaba. ¿Qué limpiabas o qué? Los voladores. Yo los manejaba. Se pagaba el perico. Mucho. ¿De dónde eras encargado? De Pecua, Huichuco. ¿De dónde más? De Mayanalán. ¿Cuánta gente tienes ahí? 19. Tú, Ferse, levanta la cara, carnal. Yo estaba encargado de Iguala. Era jefe de sicarios. ¿En qué homicidio participaste? En un homicidio y más. ¿Cuál es? El de la... Todos los que ha habido. ¿A quién le entregaste a las mujeres para que las mataran? A Huicho. ¿En dónde? En la Morenita. ¿Por orden de quién? De Colín y Chucho Brito. ¿Por qué? Porque nos estaban poniendo. ¿Cuántas mujeres has matado? Una. ¿Y las demás? Las entregué a la Colín y a la Beba. Aquí está igual a toda la basura que los extorsionaba y que les robaba y que mataba gente inocente. Chingaron a su madre. Arriba la gente de la sierra, hijos de su puta madre. Esa plaza ya tiene dueño. Arriba, arriba. 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 So that was the interrogation. I can shed some light in regards to what was being said. The gunman opens by saying, People of Iguala, here are the arseholes that killed and extorted innocent people and women. This is the trash that had this beautiful city in terror. This town now has a new owner. He then goes on to say, fucking Cachetes, who is a HIAP member in the Guerrero Unidos cartel. His nickname in English is Cheeks. But he goes on to say, we offered our hand, Cachetes, but you bit it. Just like all of the others who have helped you out, you fucking dog. We here are the people of the mountains. Either align with us or we kill you. The gunman then interrogates the cartel members one by one. He asks basic questions such as what was their name, what their job description was, and their responsibilities within the Guerrero Unidos cartel. Now I'm not going to take you through each individual cartel member and who they were, what they did, but some of the job roles included being Sicarios, which is basically a hitman or a gunman, one man said that he assisted in taxing construction firms and other manual labour jobs. Another said that he basically extorts as much money from the public as possible. Another said that he smuggles weed, cocaine and beer into jails and prisons. And most interestingly, the last guy they interrogated, the camera focuses on the man. He's wearing a black polo shirt and he said that he was in charge of the plaza of Iguala and essentially he confessed that he killed women, innocents, etc, etc. So you basically know right there he is going to suffer a painful and brutal demise. And yeah, after the interrogation scene, it then delves into the execution portion of the video. And the execution portion starts with a man wearing a blue check shirt. He's laying on the ground, hands tied behind his back. He's having his legs held by two cartel members and one of the cartel members gets a sickle and begins hacking at his leg around the kneecap area to remove his leg. And yeah, they begin removing his lower right leg. They are hacking away with a sickle and as the guy continues to hack, you can see basically where his knee is, all of the cartilage, all of the bone and a lot of blood. It's an extremely drawn out process, but one thing I will say, the first victim in this video like took it extremely well. He's not even screaming, he's not even moaning, in fact he's talking to his captors saying things like come on bro and things like that. He's trying to plead with his captors but it's not in a you know like 
the way you would expect. Put it that way, he's talking like he's taking a stroll in the park. You know, he, he lets out a few grunts here and there, but listen, I let out screams when I stub my toe. So this guy, he took it like a complete champ. I'm sure that was because of adrenaline or shock maybe, but he definitely took it well, all things considered. And yeah, it continues and they've basically hacked off his right leg. And by the way, as this execution is happening, the camera would sometimes pan to the captured cartel members in the background. They was all watching what was happening and the look on their faces was that of defeat and basically acceptance that their fate was sealed. There was no crying, there was no screaming, they was basically just waiting for their turn. Honestly, it was kind of a surreal sight. It was like they was under a trance almost. Nevertheless, after they've essentially hacked the blue check shirt guy's right leg off, then the video skips forwards to the guy I mentioned earlier, the guy in the black shirt, who was, I believe, the plaza leader in Iguala of the La Bandera faction of the Guerrero Unidos cartel. And take my word for it, don't go searching for this video, but the guy in the black shirt doesn't take it anywhere near as well as the previous dude. During this portion of the execution scene, you see the guy laying on his back and a man is essentially slicing his leg off at the kneecap with a knife. They start at his right leg and after his leg has been basically three quarters removed, the guy then gets the sickle and hacks away to completely remove his right leg. At this point in time, there's a hell of a lot of blood and the guy is screaming all of the way through. After they removed his right leg, naturally they moved to his left leg and started the same process again. And as this is happening, he's still screaming extremely loudly. And as they are doing the same thing on his left leg, you can see him basically flail around the bloody stump which remains of his right leg. After they've removed his left leg, the same way, they then turn him over, get a knife, slit under his throat and keep on going until the head has been fully removed and that is where the video ends. So I think it's safe to assume all 20 captured members of the Guerrero Unidos cartel in this video are now all dead. It doesn't look like they spared anybody. Nobody involved in this video has been seen since, so, so I think it's safe to assume that they're all dead. So yeah, none of the victims in this video have been seen alive since. However, four bodies were found dumped in the trunk of an abandoned car, and the car was actually left abandoned in front of the campaign office for Iguala Mayor, David Gamma Perez. Which is interesting because during the interrogation scene, it's revealed that the Guerrero Unidos and in particular, Chucho Brito is a close ally of Iguala Mayor elect, David Gamma Perez. Chucho Brito being allegedly the leader of the La Bendera faction of the Guerrero Unidos cartel. So basically they left those body parts outside his office as a warning, a warning to close ties with the Guerrero Unidos cartel. So David Gamma Perez right now, I would say is stuck between a rock and a hard place because if he closes connections with them, they're going to want him dead and if he doesn't, you would imagine that the Los Tlacos would want to kill him. So right now he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'm sure he's shitting bricks right now. It'll be interesting to see what happens with David Gamma Perez now that he's been implicated in the cartel world. My guess is that he will somehow weasel out of it. I'm sure he's got a lot of protection and, you know, we, we've heard this before with numerous cartels being affiliated with politicians, army personnel, high up police chiefs, etc. And nothing usually comes of it, so I won't hold my breath in regards to anything happening here. I think he's under more threat from the cartels themselves, more so than the actual authorities. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, once again, more brutal cartel slayings being recorded on camera for me to talk about. And again, this one was relatively recent, so nothing seems to be changing down in Mexico. At some point in time, you would imagine there has to be a tipping point for when things will start getting better. But as of right now, I think that day is still a long way away, if I'm being honest. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it does change so that, you know, the innocent people caught up in the crossfire can go back to living a normal life. 
but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you can enjoy this sort of contents. And also a big shout out to Tony and Sarola for helping with some translations for this video. It really does help me out guys, so much appreciated. And also shout out to you guys for suggesting this case. And if you have any other suggestions in regards to cases that you want me to cover, please feel free to comment below or drop me an email, anything like that, and I will consider anything. So shout out to you guys. Thank you very much for the support. And as always, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.